Over the river and through the woods, to grandmother's house we go. Thanksgiving is only a couple of days away, three days away. And another winter card. This is probably going to somebody in my group, my family, my friends. So I'll show you how I did this right now. And um, I guess if I were to do it again, I would use more blue and less purple. But for now, this is the purple and orange <laughs> over the hill, over, what, what is the song again? Over, over the rivers, over the rivers, right? Did I say it wrong the first time? Over the river and through the woods, to grandmother's house we go. All right, here we go. I'll show you how I did this right now. another fun one just a fun little simple winter landscape let's put some sun in the distance just a little bit of yellow it's kind of a yellow green isn't it i guess i got some green mixed in there that's okay we'll figure it out we'll figure it out as we go along right just spread that out a little bit and then let's add a little bit of orange to it so the distant light gets a little bit of red added to it red or orange and that's kind of the kind of the, the mistake i just made in talking by calling it red it is actually true you could add red to it and it wouldn't really matter because one thing i like to think is that we're all making our own art and we all have our own way of doing it and that's what makes us unique that's what makes your art different from anybody else's and it makes the time that you spend doing your art more than just your time it truly is your talent you know so that's that's a really good thing to to not forget or maybe just keep it close to you. Just keep it close to you. What I'm gonna do is add a little, now I said red, but I'm gonna add a little bit of red for the edges, the very edges. So I think I'll go for this one. Just put a little bit there on the edges, just so that it gets to the very distant part of the sunlight, we have some red color. Yeah, I think I think yellow and orange are probably the warmer colors, but you could you could argue that red is a, a warm color. I think red is sort of like heading back toward the, the cooler colors. I know it's not cool, but all right now what I want to do is I want to add some purple. Let's get some of this violet purple here. And I'm going to add it here. This is going to be some of that, that background or distant land where the sun is not quite reaching. Just going to add that there. Just going to blot it in. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's even mixing with the water for the sky. That's okay. And I kind of want to leave some blank spots here. So let me get the let me get the paper towel and soak some of that up, and then we'll spread it around again. Yeah, that's a good way to do that. You just just kind of spread it around. Let it be its own little thing here. So that's gonna be the background. Make sure we keep some white in there. There we go. Now let's take a smaller, smaller brush. Maybe this size here. That looks good. And I'm gonna take some dark, very dark paint, black or, or dark blue. 
And I'm going to make a little river here. Okay, so just this is kind of defined. Just a little bit. Just kind of peeking its peeking itself out of the out of the distant thing here. So you can see what's happening in the distance. It's not quite visible yet. And then when it comes around here, we'll have that edge of snow right there. We'll make it blue. And we'll bring it all the way over, all the way over to here. So that's going to be the edge right there of that little riverway little waterway in the in the frozen the frozen frozen background today is monday by the way it is november 25th one month before christmas two let's see three days before thanksgiving and hanukkah also starts from what i understand on the at sunset on christmas day so this year we have hanukkah and christmas on well it's sort of on the same day one of them starts on that day and one of them is that day so it's exciting when you're a kid especially when i grew up in new york i had probably half my friends were jewish and the other for the other half was Catholic, and uh, well, maybe no. Let's say a third, a third, a third. I probably had a third that were Jewish, a third that were Catholic, and a third that were some form of Protestant. And I guess we had a little bit of everything, and I don't remember it ever being. I don't remember it ever being a name calling thing, like you see now in the press. I don't know. I think we just accepted each other for what, you know, the labels were that we had if we were black or white. I don't even remember calling anybody that. You know, I don't remember that. I remember the food, like the Italian kids would have Italian food, but I don't remember calling the kids Italian. That's weird. Today's a weird, different, different world. Yeah. I had a friend named Jimmy. He was I Irish background. His mother celebrated um, St. Patrick's Day. Well, we all did. And uh, but she she was really good with the the Irish food and just really good. My other friend's mother was German. Well, my mother was from Germany, but she wasn't really German. She grew up in the Bronx. She, you know, but um, some of them. It was always the food, you know? It was always the food. I don't know what's wrong with the world today. All right, enough of that. So this is our river. I know it doesn't look like a river right now, but that's it. This is gonna be our river. And if you notice, I purposely added a little bit of lighter areas because we're gonna add, I guess I can do that now, put a little bit of orange into the water. Just to, just to make it orange. Just to get some of that sky reflecting off. And you see that white that I kept there? That's gonna be, hopefully, it's gonna look like snow when we're done. All right. Now, since that's wet, I don't wanna touch the edges of it. What I wanna do is get some darker, darker purple, maybe some blue. Maybe some blue would be the best thing to do. So put some of that kind of in the background here. Let me get the, the brown washed out of that. Oops. There we go. Just a little bit, just to kind of dab it around. And there like that. Just kind of just have some fun with the watercolor. Over here, we'll try to make it a little bit darker in the background. So we can add some blue to that, I think. I think it wouldn't hurt. 
Let's make them in a blue. Mix that blue with that purple. Now these are the distant bushes and stuff that are back there. They're poking their they're poking their shadows in front of the sunlight. So we have this here one. Just a little bit here. Define some of these areas here. <coughs> it's always when we did the um, art auction at the church on this past Saturday, um, the one thing that people were asking me was um, questions about how you make some of these cards, you know, what or the art itself, not just cards, but any art. And the one thing that the artists that were there all seemed to agree with me on is that there's an ugly stage for almost every piece of art. Almost every piece of art has an ugly stage. And that's where we are right now with this picture. <laughs> We're at the ugly stage. Yep, we are. This is the ugly stage. So right now, see like if somebody walked in, this is one of the things when you're doing plain air and, and people will, you know, and people in public come up and look at what you're doing. I've never done watercolor plain air. It's just too hard because it has to be a flat surface for me. You you guys might have figured out a way to do it on a easel, but so when somebody comes up and you and you're you know, you're just starting a picture and and it doesn't look like much, they kinda I don't know, they don't always know what to say. They say, Well what is that supposed to be? And then they look at the the scene that you're looking at is I don't I don't see that there and then I'll say well I don't either <laughs> but but maybe maybe if I give it a little time it'll start to look like that area that we're looking at because right now I know I agree with you it doesn't look like that and it doesn't ever look like it that's the ugly stage now in comp in um, portraits Wow, in portraits, sometimes the face looks so hideous in the in the early stages, you know, and you know you really try hard to to not let anybody see it before <laughs> before it looks like something. But it almost always has somebody almost almost always have somebody walking up to you. I used to do sketches at Disney and Universal, and. Um, <laughs> It was always funny to watch, listen to people who were watching me do it. I was pretty quick. I had to be quick. I had to be quick. You, I, back in those days, there was there was no digital, like like today. I know you could use an iPad. Not that iPad is quicker necessarily, but the but the good thing about today's technology in those circumstances, and I haven't worked in there for years, so I'm only telling you what I've seen is that what they do, instead of making somebody wait, because, you know, they were, they paid a lot of money to be in those theme parks. And it, 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 waiting is, is kind of the name of the game in every theme park. They're waiting for this ride, they're waiting for that ride. So the one thing you don't want them to have to do is to wait for a sketch of themselves or of somebody they love. So the way it's done now, now I don't know if this is done everywhere, but what I've seen is that what they do is they take a photograph of the person and then they use that photograph as a reference while the while the person is walking through the park. Now, what does that do to your money? This is the question, well, what do you do about the money? Well, the, the, the resort or the park, depending on where they're working, is um, really kind of the boss. So you leave it up to the boss and let them do it they have they have a way of taking the money up in advance they pay the money in advance and, and they guarantee that if they don't like it they don't have to buy it <coughs> which is kind of a bummer for the artist but i think the artists get paid by the hour anyway i'm not really sure not with me when um, i know i keep in mind i did it back in the old old days and we we uh we were our own boss not anymore. 
No, I think they, they uh, what do you call it? They f farm it out? No, what do you call that again? Not farm it out, they outsource it. Yeah, so they have companies that come in and do that now. So what I'm doing now, I'm taking this area that's going to look like distant snow, and I'm putting a little, very little, little bit of blue onto it. I can always come back and darken that water. Make it all dark. I keep some of this light so it looks like we have a, a bush right here, for example. Take some of this light blue and put it along the edge of this snow here. This here snow here. And just thin it out, just keep it real thin. Just put this down. All these little areas that have shadows in the snow. Very little, very little of it will actually be white. Most of it will be light blue. I know right now it looks like most of it is light purple. And that works too. Purple works. Absolutely. And of course we're going to have to make that river darker. Much darker, I think. Yeah, it was just the starting point. To that sky right there a little bit. Take it up there. Make it hazy. Make it a hazy shade of winter. Remember that Simon Garfunkel song? It's a hazy shade of winter. It looks like a mess. Right now, it, it was truly a mess. There's nothing here that looks like snow or landscape or anything. It looks like a big abstract mess. Not that abstract is a mess, but it is when I do it. Abstract is a mess when I do it. come back and make some more blue on there but for right now I think just a little bit more and we'll be done keep that purple there for now kind of make it nice it'll be nice I think when it's all done there we go all right now what I want to do is I want to go back to the dark areas and make them a little bit darker. Let me just add a little bit more darkness to this river. We take our time with it this time and just kind of make it darker. We can maybe start to see the definition that I'm trying to accomplish here. And 
we remember we put that orange in there and that was that's going to hold it right there it's nice it looks like a nice reflection you can't see it yet but it's there Are you starting to see it now? I think I'm starting to see it. I'm starting to see the landscape show itself. Little bits of snow in the water. some of that blue later on just to darken it a little bit but right now I just wanted some of these defined areas for the river to be a little bit more defined a little bit darker there we go right there okay See how's that doing over there? I'm gonna take some of these darker blues like this one right here. Just add a little bit dark blue here. Some of this underbrush in the background. Make it darker. And over here. Get some of this blue on here. And just kind of spread it out. Again, it's got to be lighter than the river. The river is the darker part but it can be kind of a close second as far as the the distant hues of this the distant contrasted lights just kind of put a bunch of shadows here all of this blue is shadows in the snow and shadows on the bushes I'm just going to keep this here like this A little bit of blue there. Go ahead and darken this a little bit. Just put a little bit of contrast in the background. The fun part is almost about to start, the part where we add the trees.
There's very little sunlight hitting the snow directly. It's almost all diffused sunlight. So our shadows are kind of a combination of blue and purple. I can't swear that that was how I planned it, but that's how it's looking. So that's what we're going to work with here. Keep some of that like, like distant shadows. All right, and I think I'm going to add a little more darkness to this water just to Kind of re-emphasize what's happening here. Okay. All right. Now, just for the fun of it, let's kind of put some orange down here, close to the close to the the tree line. Just to just to make the the background a little bit darker in the warm colors so that they accentuate the, the, the cool colors later on when, we, when we're all done. And we'll make sure we keep that light from the sun, the brightest part here. I'm just gonna get this orange as best I can all over here. be children. Let watercolor be watercolor. <laughs> if you just let it do what it does. Sometimes you have to sometimes you have to correct it, just like with children. But sometimes if you just let the water flow it it does wonderful things. I think that's true with children too. Just let them be themselves and you'll be surprised what God has put into their soul to make them special. they special gifts that they have for the world, just waiting to be discovered. There are so many things that distract us from everything. All right, there we go. Now we have a more, I think a more defined look here. I'll even pull some out, just kind of do that. Now as long as they have some dark colors here handy, let me just take a small brush, a very small brush. Let me see if I can find a nice little small brush. That's too big. Um, oh, that one might work. That's a little small brush. I'll just take some little tiny, as long as it's not too wet back there. It's kind of wet. Hmm. Okay, what I want to do is get some little tiny vertical lines. There can be some distant trees, just little tiny ones. Well, that was a mistake. Did you see that? So now I gotta work with that mistake. That's not what I wanted. I wanted a vertical line. So that's instead of a vertical line, that's gonna be a, a distant bush, I think, right there. See, you can work with it. We'll see if I get a little vertical line here. There's a little vertical line right there. That could be a distant tree. Yeah, here we go. Just the sun is peeking through. There we go. 
just a few more of those things. I'm not so concerned about it spreading because those can be bushes. But I kind of want some straight lines, some vertical lines here, just to, just to put them in the background. Yeah, these are all bushes here. This, this area that's still wet, it's, it's taking the watercolor and spreading it. Look at that. That's kind of cool, actually. All right, well, let it do it. As long as it's doing it, let it do it. Here we go. A few more vertical lines. Make them trees. Just see what happens. Just see what happens. Let's see if it builds itself. See if it has a mind of its own. Yeah, maybe there's some darker areas back here that I didn't see as I was trying to think it through. I can't think everything through. Sometimes you just got to let it do its own thing. Yeah. You know what I've been watching lately? I've been watching a show called This Old House. Oh my gosh, those guys know so much about building a house and moving a house. They move houses. Um, they build sinks and they build gardens and oh my gosh, and they change things. They finish basements and it's just incredible. And they know exactly what to do. They have all the tools. And the tools are sometimes like foreign to me. It's like, wow, I didn't know they made that kind of tool. And then you think to yourself, well, in the world of art, you can't, you can't claim that the tool did it because it's not the tool that does it. It's, it's the craftsman, the artist or whoever. So I make the mistake of thinking, well, that's a cool tool. I could do that if I had that. Well, you can't really, you have to not only have that, but you have to have the, the, the skill, the talent, the experience, so many things, right? So many things go into a person. It's like when somebody asked me, how long did it take you to paint the portrait of Jesus? Well, in actual time, it took me about 18 hours, which doesn't seem like long to me. And that's probably because it wasn't really that complicated. It was really just a, a portrait with... Um, I mean, a small part of the painting was his face, and that's what took the longest. But the real answer is it took me 70 years. Because I've been painting all my life, drawing all my life. I, I had a career in radio, but trust me, I was working in art all the time I was in radio. I was painting and sketching and drawing. I didn't make a career out of it. But that doesn't mean I didn't do it. And so the same thing with a, a craftsman, you know, who's been working maybe he started out or she started out with her mother her father with somebody who was like when they were younger you know so I think when you ask somebody how long does it take well it doesn't mean you're going to be able to do it that quickly unless it's a super simple job I know you know that and in fact I know just by having read your comments I know that a lot of you are so experienced at so much of this. I, I um, say it over and over and over again that I am not a teacher. As, as much as maybe some people look at these videos and think, oh, that's Papa, he's teaching how to do art. Well, yes and no. Because the truth is I'm showing you how I do art. And I know that a lot of times I'm really learning from you because you'll leave these comments and I'll say, oh, I hadn't thought of that. Or oh, that's a great idea. Or oh, yeah, you're right, I messed up on that. <laughs> One of the good things about painting cards and <coughs> giving them away <coughs> is that they're actually practice, they're actually works of practice. You know, because I could take any of these designs and make them into a, a full painting 
you know, a larger painting, something that maybe would be out of oil or or even a larger watercolor. You could easily take a watercolor a canvas, which I didn't even know they made them, but I found them the other day. Um, and there's, a, there's a, a substance you can paint onto a board or onto a rock or onto a piece of cardboard or onto a cup, I think. I'm not going to be so sure. I'm not so sure about the cup. But you can make it a watercolor surface. I know. That's kind of cool. I should, I should get some of that stuff. And actually, you can buy it, but you can also make it. Now, I don't know how to tell you how to make it. But I will tell you that there's a video on YouTube of a lady who makes her own... Uh, I can't remember what it's called now, but it's um, something you brush onto a, a surface that's not a watercolor surface. And you can make that surface able to uh, accept watercolor just like watercolor paper does. Which is kind of cool. All right, you can tell I'm darkening the water even even more than I was originally. Because this water is kind of dark. Oh, black water, keep on flowing, Mississippi. What's that song? Oh, black water. Oh, yeah. yeah. I won't sing the song, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, today's another day for the doctor for me. I got to go on a... Let's see, it's 6.30. Oh, I got to be there in like two hours. I better hurry up. I better hurry up. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Don't you hate having to hurry? All right, let's... Uh, I guess that means I should work on the trees, the foreground trees. I just get a medium-sized brush. Um... about this one? That looks good. That looks good. Let's take a color here. Alright, let's bring one right here. I hope that's dry enough. to the top. It's not too wet over there. There we go. The branches here. I have another one that comes down over here, another thicker one. branches on here from the distant trees and from the local trees the nearby trees and I'm probably going to use gouache to add snow to these to these limbs okay get some more 
trees here in the background. The tiny trees that still can be seen. So the difference between the background trees and the foreground trees are the background trees won't you won't be able to see the snow in them so much. I don't think at all. But what'll pop the the, the foreground trees like this one. This one will have that snow on it in just a little bit. And it'll look pretty I think. I just get a tall baby over here. Come on. One tall thin tree. That starts out right there. Let's get some branches on that tree. I think pulling away sometimes is better. Like going from thick to thin. But I don't always follow my own rules. Like I just broke that rule right there. I said one thing and did another. Well, don't, don't be surprised. That's the way I am. I often ask Robin. I'll say one thing and do another. Yeah, I'm going to take the garbage out. And then instead I stop and talk to the neighbor. <laughs> oh, it's gosh. Isn't it great to have somebody who loves you so you can make mistakes and not be too worried about it? Gotta be one step at a time. Do whatever you can to make life as good as possible for the people around you. When we had the art art auction on Saturday, I was so I was so happy to hear people talking about who was getting the cards, like when they were buying the card, this is a card for my sister, or this is a card for my friend in the hospital, or this is a card, and they everybody had a, a person who was getting the card, which is like, oh my gosh, well that's what it's all about, isn't it? Isn't it about giving, giving something nice to somebody, you know? And the fact that I painted it makes me proud, makes me happy. No. So here we go. Some more branches on these trees. Put a little tree over here. You could take a tiny little brush and make real fine branches also. The tip, the tip of this brush is working out nicely as, as a tool to make these little tiny branches. I'm real happy with the way some of this is looking. And then as I look back at the, at the river, I can see areas that could be improved. I can see areas that need shadows. Mm. I can see areas that I can touch up a little bit. See, the more I do it, the more I can see what, what I was trying to see in the first place. So, it is, it is, a, it is an evolving thing. Art, art is evolving. An evolution right in front of your eyes. Just, just having a good time putting paper making a piece of paper into something for somebody. Just having a good time with this. And I think what I'll do is I'll add a little bit more orange back there. i grab some of that orange. Yeah. A little more orange. It was a little bit more of an orange glow back there. You know what that does? That brightens up that sun. 
It makes the sun look even brighter. And then uh, down in the water it gets the reflection. And just tapping it like this would be kind of a great way of maybe hiding some of the things that are a little bit too defined. Some of those things you don't want so defined. today too so we're not going together to the doctor I'm going by myself and she's going by herself oh gosh peeking through and maybe some undefined things in the distance even and then once we put that little bit of white on there we'll be done maybe the river's over here maybe the river's a little bit wider back there than we thought it was There we go, there's that, that waterway. Make its way around these little areas here. Yeah, that looks good. Just flowing through the landscape. It might even be frozen for all I know. All right, now let's take the white. And what I'm gonna use for white is gouache. This is the gouache, can you see it? I have it in front of the camera. It's almost empty. It's my tube of white. I had to order this on Amazon. I couldn't find white gouache by itself in, the, in Hobby Lobby. Gosh, we went to Hobby Lobby the other day to make a video of ideas for Christmas gifts and some of the feedback we got on the video was like people I love Hobby Lobby I don't know why some people don't like it but some people don't I don't know I'm just an amateur at heart right now I just want to add the white snow on the limbs just to make it look very pretty Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool how that does that? Yeah, we got a lot of pushback for going to Hobby Lobby. Well, I guess I'll have to defend myself a little bit with that because Robert and I have been to Blix, which is, I guess, a more respected name for art supplies. And we used to have some mom and pop art stores in our town also. One was called Red Swan and um there was another one called griffins but they have closed and i think i know why they closed they closed because artists were not supporting them that's got to be the reason robert and i were in there a lot but it was never crowded in there so that's what happens you know and i, th and I think one of the things that is the result of doing the videos is that people locally are watching them and they're saying oh i could do that if even the art auction at the church i really truly think that some people who had art talent were not using their art talent and now they are 
because they're influenced, inspired, motivated, simply by watching other people do art. And it's a very exponential thing. You know, it grows like, you know, that exponential math example is one plus one is two, and then two times two is four, and then four times four is 16, or whatever. So it doesn't grow like one a day, it grows like exponentially. I love that word, exponential. So I think the number of artists in our community hasn't grown. What I think is the number of artists who are getting back into it has grown. They've always been artists. A lot of the people who I met at the church who were also artists were telling me that they always painted when they were younger and now they're starting to paint again. And I'll say, that's great. That's great. Well, what got you started again? And you know what they'll tell me? They'll tell me Bob Ross. Bob Ross has been gone for years. He's been dead. But his videos live on. That's the thing. People are watching his old videos. And that's inspiring them to go out and buy some paint. And I would like to think that the cards that I made for that art auction were, were as inspiring people also. Because they said, wow, I could make my own cards. You know, I could make my own cards and give to my family. And it's not just cards, by the way. You know, if you go through the art store, and whether you like Hobby Lobby or not, Hobby Lobby has what I'm about to tell you. They have these boxes, these nice wooden boxes. And you can take those wooden boxes and paint them and put scenery on them, or just paint flowers, or paint Santa Claus, or paint Jesus, or, or paint candles, <coughs> or whatever, paint planets. I painted a, a planet for my grandson. I painted it, and uh, he loved it, I hope. I hope it's something he keeps forever. I don't know that he will. And um, it's just one of those that why don't we have art stores in my little town here? Well, I think it's because the artists stop, su stop supporting them. And Hobby Lobby is more of a craft crafter's store, but they do have an art section. And I think that's why a lot of artists put their nose up at Hobby Lobby, is because I'm not a craftsman, I'm an artist. Well, they have an art section. And, you know... You just use what you have, you know. So in my in my situation, if I go to a, a what you might call a true art store, I have to drive a little bit. There's a couple of places. Orlando has some great art stores. And I can't remember the name of all of them, but Rob and I have been to probably all of them at one time or another. It's just the drive, you know. It's just so distant sometimes. And because this is Florida, you know, we have so much tourism that sometimes driving on the turnpike is, you know, I hate to sound like I'm an old man, but I am. <laughs> and driving sometimes in tourist traffic is not, not always the funnest. Hmm. But I'm okay. You know, I'm having fun with this. And and what I do I do appreciate the fact that there is that thing called Amazon because I know some of you are really telling the truth when it comes to the art supplies that are not the most professional. And you're right. I know. I, I really, truly agree with you. And so the solution for me is either drive in that traffic or or just not worry about it. Just go and just you know, enjoy the drive, whatever. Or order through Amazon or, or just order online. It doesn't have to be Amazon. And then just have some something delivered to the door. And you say, yay, my package is here. My package is here. Isn't that fun when your package arrives? <laughs> All right, so I think right here, a few 
few little dots on the on the water. A few little areas of snow that are picking up on the light. Maybe even a little bit of white in the the area that was the sun. Maybe a little bit brighter. There we go. And see how that looks like it's reflecting the the uh, yellow right there. All right. Let me smear the back of the card because I like doing that. I like just spreading out the back. I use the back as my palette, as you can tell. And it works out well, because later on people say, whoa, there's an art piece on the back too, and it's abstract. Well, not really. I didn't give it any thought, but that's fine. Hey, you know what? If there's anything I use to tell myself, to help me get through anything. Well, just have fun. Just have fun. So even my drive to Orlando on the Florida Turnpike. Oh, it's traffic. Just have fun. What's fun right now for me is putting on the radio in the car and listening to Christmas songs. I wish they would play more. It seems like they have a very, very narrow list of Christmas songs. All right, I'm gonna let this dry and I'll be right back. Okay, it's dry. Let me fold it and make it a card. And there's our winter scene. I was, I was toying with the idea of putting snowflakes in there, but I think I'll leave it like that. And I guess I used a little bit too much purple. I guess I should have stuck with the blue. So maybe next time. But for now, that's it. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye.